Hello everybody, welcome back. It is Judicious Fire and I am here with the Mad Inventor. The insane scientist, the crazy creator. He has hit Castle Clash and we've gotten him up to max everything. I'm gonna take a look at what this guy does, what he does well, and what his limitations are. Please hit the subscribe button. We are on our way to 20k subs. We are also recruiting in the guild KOA if you have 1.5 million might and above and you are on iOS. Let's take a look at uh, Mad Inventor here. Okay, he does a heck of a ton of damage to area, heroes in a certain area, enemies in a certain area. It's kind of like a boreal fox proc, okay, about that same size. Those heroes or enemies could be troops. But whatever is being hit that's alive is going to take more damage. 36% more damage. Now that effect can be removed or dispelled. Say um, something like a, uh, an occultist that erases negative conditions. that can be taken away. Lasts for 5 seconds. Now during those same 5 seconds, Mad Inventor gets a huge dodge boost. So... 7 second cooldown. So for 2 seconds, this effect is not operating. Hero is immune to silence. His attack gets an increase, a percentage-based increase. He becomes stronger every time he performs a dodge. So the more times he dodges, uh, the stronger and stronger he gets. But it does reset back to 0 bonus of attack as soon as he uses his skill. So it cannot stack exponentially, uh, but it does stack incrementally up until a certain threshold. Once his skill activates, it goes back to zero again. Okay, this is what I got on this man. I've got a uh, a dragon's cover. I mean, he could eat, re and, uh, eat reflect, and deflect for breakfast. I don't want that to happen. Uh, he also really has no damage reduction. Dragon's cover takes care of both of those. That's great. If you don't have a dragon's cover, I would at least have like a wicked armor, talent, insignia, anything. It's going to up his attack, but it's also going to protect him from reflect and deflect. And that's really essential. I consider this guy to be a base defense hero. Uh, I will illustrate why in a little bit. This is why at, for base defense, I have an empower. This way he's able to auto proc. And when the bad guys come in on the base, just like a boreal fox, he'll hit him with that area of effect damage attack. If not, I'm running the dragon's cover. As an insignia, it's dragon's cover with empower, I have him on my base defending. If I were uh, going with an empower, I wouldn't be attacking with him at all in terms of its talent. So dragon's cover, and you could do, if you were attacking, I guess you could do a soul healer. You could do a true piety. But again, I don't consider this guy to be an attacker. I consider him to be a fairly decent base defender. I did a base defense uh, top 10 heroes countdown uh, just recently, in the last couple of days. Uh, if I had to do it all over again, I might put Mad Inventor in there, but he would be like around number 10. Uh, he has really good high stats, really high numbers, but his attack is random. And let's see that now. Okay, we throw him out there against Peace Data Space. Uh, Peace Data, one of our top players here on iOS. Now take a look. He just hit over at that Zef area. Yep. Not using any other heroes to help him out or anything like that. He just hit two times. He skill activated two times, two times in random areas. Let's go and for uh, experiment's sake, let's go in just real time. A bubblegum jelly fabled, one of our top DPS players in the game. Let's go over here. Instantly kill due to a lack of damage reduction. One of the guildies, Faya. I'm going to get blasted immediately. Okay, due to a lack of damage reduction. Let me just make this point. 
I don't consider him an attacker because, one, it's tough to keep him alive. Uh, he's not a tank. Even though he has really high numbers, he's not a tank. Doesn't have any built-in damage reduction. Doesn't have any way to heal himself. He's got to have a full damage reducing and healing team beside him. And second, his proc, the thing that actually does damage, is randomized. And you don't know where it's going to land. If it lands on top of the bad guy heroes, it's lights out for them. And they're going to either, if they have a damage cap, they're still going to take damage over time. If they don't have a damage cap, they could get straight up killed. That's great. But you have to be super lucky for that to happen. It could just as well fall on an army camp full of troops. So what's happened is we've split players into two different factions. On one side, you have those who do attacks and primarily focus on attacking heroes. Hero killing. Clear a base of its heroes. Then you smash the buildings. Well, if you're on that side of the camp, you're not going to be using Mad Inventor because you're going to be doing base damage all over the place and you're not going to be able to do focused, concentrated hero damage. So he's not an attacker in that way. Let's look at the other side of the camp. Players that do base damage and try to avoid the heroes. It's like, like say, Guild Wars. Want 100% in Guild War, blow up the base, destroy the buildings, forget about the heroes. I wouldn't use this guy either. There are much, much better heroes to use that do base damage and that will do consistent base damage and actually stay alive during that process. So he's not an attacker if you're a hero killing kind of player and he's not an attacker that's good if you are a base damaging kind of player. I will make one quick note, one brief aside. He does have really, really high attack. And if you want to turn him into kind of a suicide troop, that can work. You put a hyper strength on him, uh, you up his attack, maybe even with an unholy pact, and you run it a couple of times, might take, you know, six times the charm, you drop him against a Dynamica. And you can theoretically cause enough damage against the Dynamica that the Dynamica's damage cap doesn't kick in. And you can just bring his health down to zero. If you're doing that, it'd be easier to use Bogeyman, who's a finer example of being able to one-shot a Dynamica. Uh, in fact, one-shot up to five heroes at a time. Let's see what this man does best. And he does best in terms of base defense. I'm going to do a L10 hero trials where it's just Mad Inventor versus all of these flads. Now, even under a base defense scenario, he's going to be doing randomized attacks around the board. You can't really guess where it's going to happen. So that is a limitation as well. But I'll tell you in a base defense scenario, let's run another one. And let's not make it like 85 flats this time, okay? In a base defense scenario where it's normal circumstances, this is okay to have, to have a randomized attack, a random location attack. Because when the bad guys come and attack your base, they're still going to get hit by this guy. The only way to uh, send his attack someplace else is by the use of troops. Maybe if somebody drops a whole bunch of little troops, his attack will um, activate. And during that lull in between skill activations, they're able to attack. But you can do the same thing with Boreal Fox. Uh, so a good base defender, um, but I think really tricky to use under most circumstances as an attacker. You can see it here with his hero skins. Uh, now in the skin mode, like a lethal uh, pool goer. For his enchantment, I went with Energy Surge. I think uh, Holy Conviction might be a little bit better, especially with the kind of damage that he can take. Uh, but if you're using him primarily for uh, base defense and trying to take advantage of the fact that he naturally gets a dodge bonus, I think the increase in accuracy as well as the dodge boost can be very, very helpful for him. Look now at his traits. I want to be clear about why I chose accuracy. 
this guy gets a huge dodge boost. I think under some circumstances with certain heroes, to increase that dodge by giving dodge traits would be a wise decision. But this is a hero whose primary purpose is to do damage against the enemy. He is primarily a hero killer. He provi provides no help to your team. He's not supportive in any way. He's designed to kill off heroes. So even though he gets this huge dodge boost, if I were to increase that with even more dodge through traits, then what I'm going to get is a very, very strong ballet dancer. He's going to dance around and dance around and dance around. He's going to get all these attack boosts on top of each other, but he's not going to actually hit the enemy. The accuracy that is needed in this game that is key. That is primary for any hero killer. So I went with accuracy. If he is going to be of any kind of use, he needs to actually hit. And that's why I put a fundamental accuracy build. If I want to give him even more dodge than his incredible dodge bonus already provides, I can just put a pet on there that has dodge and in fact get more dodge than this trait system provides. Uh, here's his relic system. This is what I ended up coming up with. I'm not going to push it. I think in this game, if it doesn't come right away, play a couple of game modes. Uh, do it the next day. Do it after server reset. Feel the same way about like hero rolling, trait rolling. Um, give it a couple of chances. If it doesn't come, leave it. Okay? It has no memory. It's like a roulette wheel. It doesn't say, oh, this poor, poor player has pressed this button 50 times and is owed, <laughs> you know, the hero that the player wants or the 100% trait, whatever it is. No, it has no memory. So I'll leave it. It's great. I'm thrilled with this. The critical damage that this guy does, and we'll look at this, it's so high that in a base defense scenario, anybody who sends their hero in, unless that hero's got a permanent damage cap, the hero's turned to dust. Uh, let's take a look at his hero assist system. This is what I've put in my hero assist system. Uh, I already had tremendous accuracy on this guy. I wanted to up his attack. I also, because I have other epic heroes, I have some already in different slots with other epic heroes. Uh, the three heroes that I placed into uh, Mad Inventor are three heroes that have a very, very high attack bonus for the man. And on each of these three heroes, I have placed a stealth insignia in order to increase that attack bonus for Mad Inventor even more. And on each of these three heroes, I have placed a pet that has a very high attack trait bonus. And that too increases Mad Inventor's cumulative attack bonus all right let's take a look at this guy's numbers he's coming in at about 112 113 attack uh he has 2.85 million health he's got a pretty slow attack speed at 1350 the higher that number the slower the attacker is in this game and he has a very high movement speed. The higher that number, the faster a hero goes from point A to point B. Let's go to view more. <laughs> he has almost 50,000 accuracy. Uh, so anybody coming on the board, whether it be a troop or a hero, you're going to get hit. You can't really out-dodge that. Not without stacking a whole bunch of dodge bonuses from heroes. Uh, his dodge, just naturally, is almost 10,000, and he's going to get a huge dodge increase after that. You can use this guy in uh, Insane Dungeons and not have any problems. Uh, nice crit, 4,000 crit. I can increase that more by giving him a Vigorous Fury Insignia, and that's very nice too. Uh, let's jump over that crit damage for a second. Good crit resist. Okay, I don't have to worry about that. Nice little crit resist shield on the guy. His crit damage is 36,725. So not only does he 
hit you with a, a, a nuke. He zaps you from outer space with a laser beam. So really, really nice numbers and uh, a good hero for defense. Uh, I think we could probably wrap up, up the video at this point. Maybe we'll take it out with Insane 8 and we'll bring this video to a close. I just want to illustrate the fact that, wow, what a great Insane 8 hero he is. He's got a Dragon's Cover. He's got a, an Empower Insignia. He's got um, that Energy Surge. Enchantment. He has all accuracy traits. His pet lowers the healing of the enemy and does a, an attack. He's able to remain alive. Uh, maybe there are gunslinger copters on this base, but only a couple. That's fine. It allows him to at least activate his skill. Uh, his uh, dodge just comes, you know, from the natural upgrading process, as well as the huge dodge that he's given. And you can see it's just all misses. And he'll get stronger and stronger and stronger with each miss that happens until he activates his skill. Uh, you can see that it is randomized in its location and you have to keep in mind that you know isn't always that time it hit it isn't always going to hit the buildings they bring along a couple of base damaging spells that good and uh we're going to get an easy 100 percent on this oh my gosh wrap it up with this good defender great hero for um the Insane 8 series, where so so much dodge is required. Uh, in terms of the epic heroes in this game, I would put him at average. Uh, I think that in the months to come, maybe even years to come, as we get more and more epic heroes, uh, he's going to be a hero that we don't use too often. I mean, imagine an epic hero that does five global attacks. Well, you'd never use this guy again. He does one. Imagine an epic hero that um, attacks only heroes and not troops. Well, you'd not use, you wouldn't use this guy again. So I would say average in terms of epic heroes. Uh, in terms of overall heroes, where are there still more buildings there in the center? In terms of overall uh, heroes, including the legendaries, I would put him at above average. He has very good stats. He's a relatively decent base defender. And he is somebody that has some utility from a base uh, standpoint. Uh, also, if you really want to jack up his uh, attack, he can do okay as an attacker. Boom, we hit 100%. But if you're using him as an attacker, he's going to be randomized. Going to be tough to uh, guess what's going to happen with him. Could be a real luck element, a real roll of the dice. I hope you enjoy your clashing. I hope the game is treating you well. And I will catch you on the next video. All right, bye-bye.